We gather each night, each year on this sacred night to keep solemn vigil, to listen attentively to the story of our salvation as we await the glorious return of our King, to remember how in times past he created us out of nothing, out of his own love. How he led his people Israel, dry shod through the Red Sea, into out of Pharaoh's grasp, into freedom. How he spoke to us through the law and the prophets, showing us the way to life. And finally, finally, how he was willing to be mounted to the wood of a cross and die on the tree so that he might descend into the darkest depths of hell to throw open the gates of heaven. Friends, he is not here. He is indeed risen, and he has risen so that we all might be free. He has risen so that he might give us the gift of eternal life and win for us the prize of heaven. He has risen indeed. And now we get to bask in the glory of Easter's light. But for 12 of you, this Easter rising is no mere commemoration. For this night, Christ invites you to die to self and to rise anew, refashioned in his own image and as a member of his body. My dear elect, in just a few moments, through the sacred waters of baptism, he will wash you clean of all sin. Through the sacred chrism, he will seal you with the gift of his spirit. And under the auspices of bread and wine, he will come to you, giving you his very self, body and blood, soul and divinity. Dear elect, the twelve of you, like those first disciples, have all journeyed to this point in various ways. And over the past seven months, you have listened carefully to the sacred scriptures. You have considered carefully the teaching of Christ and his church. And you have sought to conform your way of life to that of Christ. And now, now the hour of your salvation has come. And we will be glad, glad to have you as one with us in the body of Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the witness of our elect this night is a reminder to each and every one of us that the salvation that brings them such great joy has already been gifted to us. Gifted to us in our own baptism. That the pledge that God makes to our elect this night has already been made to us through his resurrection from the dead and through the gift of holy baptism. It may well be the case that our preparation for that sacrament was not as thorough as what Brett assuredly prepares or how Brett assuredly prepares our elect. It may well be the case that our memory of that saving event may not be as clear as it will be 
for the 12 of you this night. It may well be the case that our joy in receiving this gift has waned over time, and that the day-to-day grind of life has slackened our zeal. It may well be the case that we have grown frustrated and despondent by our own seeming inability to break the shackles of sin and grow in the life of virtue. It may well be the case that we have grown angry and outraged by the all too often reminders of the brokenness of Christ's body and the failings of his church. But this night, this night Christ reminds us that even if we find ourselves in any one of those categories or so many more, the promise Christ makes to our elect this night is the same promise he made to each and every one of us. That he will love us and love us to the end. that we are worth dying for and we are worth sharing the glory of resurrection with. On this night, our faith, our zeal for faith is easily inflamed by the witness of our elect, by the glory of this liturgy, by the supreme beauty of this space, the voices of our choir. But we should be cautioned Caution to not make this moment a moment of passing religiosity, of passing zeal, but the very bedrock of our existence. That the joy we celebrate this night and share this night is to be the joy that defines every aspect of who we are. Our joy, our trust, our charity, all of it, all of it is rooted in the simple fact that Christ has died so that we might be free. That we need not earn our salvation, for he gifts it to us on the wood of the cross. This night, Christ invites us all to see all that we do in the light of his Easter glory and to let that light shine even in those places that are dark, even in those places that we like to hide, even in those places we like no one to see. Because there, there the light of Christ is most powerful and will dispel all sin and death so that he might bring us to life everlasting. So as we journey with our elect this night, may we be reminded of the salvation that has been given to us. May we bask in its joy. And may that joy shape and form all that we are and all that we do so the light of Christ may be reflected in us into the darkness of the world. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia.